been a legislator since 1976. And right now he is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Right. And he's here to talk to us about uh, the waste and corruption in the state and local school pension funds. So he's going to explain to us um, how our hard-earned tax dollars are being wasted, okay? So, <laughs> so uh, Representative Kevin thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it, all right? Thank you for having me. Why, just to let you know, Philly girl, I lived in North Philadelphia on North Broad Street when I was working on my master's degree at Temple University. So I was, I was there in Philadelphia for a year, and then of course four years down in Southern Virginia at a Southern Baptist College where I graduated. Uh, and before I went to college, I, I did go to business school and then uh, college. So it always, figures always intrigued me. and. Uh, knowing how to read a set of books, you know, certainly doesn't help or hurt in this kind of business. Sometimes there's big question marks that never seem to get answered. And this guy over here, Richard Shooker, is a real guru when it comes to finances. So we hooked up, and, and here we go, we got a Democrat and a Republican working together on an issue that really needs to be aired and exposed. Uh, they've kept this undercover, and when I hear either of the candidates or any of the candidates, I mean, forget the parties, it doesn't really matter, because when you hear the rest of the story, you're going to say, well, who's going to correct this mess? Well, this past summer, Richard Shooker asked, and I got for him, the reports, pension reports. For, there's two separate ones, one for the state employees, one for the school district employees. Those pension reports come out once a year. So he asked me, can you get me eight, nine, and 10? I got them. And then there's a commission report. So there's actually three reports each year that come out on the pensions. And then he said, how about 13? So I got him 13. OK. So he had the four reports. And then we got together and we started kicking this around in my office. What, what's going on here? So we had, and we still have around 25 billion. Now it sounds like a lot of money, and it is. Don't misunderstand me. 25, 25 billion in the state pension fund. In the school district pension fund, it was around 51 billion. Okay. Now you got to say to yourself, what do they do with that money? And see, this is what happens in a lot of the pension systems. It gets put in there and you really never know who's handling your money. You don't, unless you're doing your own investing. And when you're with groups like state employees or school district employees, there's pension boards. Now you gotta start scratching beneath the surface. Who's on these pension boards? Well, let's start out with the legislature. You have two Democrats and two Republicans from the House and the Senate. So that gives you four. Now, remember the math. On the state employees pension fund, you have 11, 11. Now there's four from the legislature. Who gets to appoint the other seven? The governor, whoever happens to be the governor. And I'm not picking sides. There's sins on both parties. And when you hear what I'm telling you, you're gonna say, why didn't somebody step in? Good question. On the school employees pension fund, there's 15. Remember, there's four from the legislature and then 11 that are appointed by the governor. So who has the majority? The governor does, whoever his appointees are. Now you would hope that these people would have some background and knowledge about investing. Very questionable. They then hire staffs to run those pension funds, both systems. In our system with the state, the gentleman that had been running our fund left at the end of December of this past year. He was making, what, over $200,000 a year, coming into work three days a week and day trading. Now, if any of you know what that means, he was, he was day trading on our ticket. 
picking out stocks and making money for himself. Yes, sir. I think it varies. It may be four years, something like that, and there's overlapping because if I'm governor and I appoint you for this term, you, you may go into the next term of the next governor. It, it'll overlap in some cases. But it's not, it's not a long term. No, no. But each governor basically gets to appoint his people to those boards. So what happened was this guy was day trading and he left at the end of the year, last year, and so did our chairman of our board. Now, you gotta say, well, what was going on? Richard uncovered that we were paying, state pension board was paying $1.35 billion in management fees to the New York stock people over a five-year period. Our rate of return on our investment was 3.6%. And you look at the school district pension fund. I remember it's around 51 billion. They were paying and still are between 500 and 600 million dollars in management fees. Okay, and they got 3.9%. You got to say to yourself, my God, what were they investing in? And then Richard uncovered, and it was reported in the media, 46% of the totals of both funds, almost 50%, 46% of both funds were risk investments. And what did that mean? Well, it was gold, real estate, derivatives, a couple other crazy things they were investing in and they tanked, they tanked. So we lost our shirts, both funds, 46% risk investments, unheard of. You gotta say to yourself, what in God's name were they thinking? You gotta wonder. The management fees are just absolutely outrageous. Richard had pointed out that initially we had three investment firms and they were making us five, six, seven percent almost continuously. Now we have close to 130 investment groups that are handling our money, your money, our money, okay? This is where it just gets so, you know, I get so aggravated by how they manhandled and manipulated our monies, both taxpayers' monies and employee monies. The, they, the, all of them are blaming the employees and the big pensions. That's nonsense. Don't you believe that for a minute? That is absolute, unadulterated garbage. Not true. The employees continue to put into that pot. They have never stopped. They're up to over 7.5% of their weekly or bi-weekly paycheck that they're putting into the pension funds. So what happened? Back under the ridge years, if you can remember, there were eight pretty good years in the stock market. It's going like this. And everybody thought, it's never gonna come down. Well, if you ever played a stock market, you know what goes up, comes down. You know, that's what happens. You look on the stock market report every night, you see it's going up, and maybe tomorrow night it's gonna go down. And that's how it fluctuates. So, we, we lost our shirts. When, when the bubble popped. However, however, and this is the big point, during those eight, nine years that it was going up, do you know what the governors did? Not just Ridge, Rendell too, and even somewhat this guy that we have in there, and he's a friend of mine, but they all have mud on their hands. They stopped putting money in. They stopped putting money into the pension funds. They don't want to talk about that. The school districts stopped put money in the pension funds. They don't want to talk about that. And I just scratched my head and I say, well, if they weren't putting their share of the pension money in when the market was high, were they reducing our taxes? No. What were they doing with the money? I don't know. You have 500 individual school districts and 499 of them are elected. We elect them and they work out their budget 
we don't do it from Harrisburg, they do it here locally, every one of the school boards. So you gotta say, well, if they were not investing the money, what were they doing with the money? I don't know. We need to ask our school directors during those years what was happening, because they weren't putting it into the pension funds. So you fast forward and you say, what is going on in New York? Well, what's going on in New York? The money managers in New York are making big, big profits. We lose, they gain. We pay the management fees whether they make money or they lose money. That's wrong. Richard said to me, he's a financial consultant, he said, Tommy, first of all, why don't they go back to the three that they used to have because they made money on those three? Big question. I don't know. Second thing. If they're making us money, they get a percentage, no management fees. And there are firms, and then the indexing, as Richard had said, is one of the safer ways of investing. Richard had come to the conclusion, after looking over all this information, I get this, if they would have been a little bit more frugal in their investment practices, they would have doubled the money in our pension funds, doubled. Our state employees' pension fund should have approximately 50 billion, and the school districts over 112 billion. And you gotta say, well, why aren't they? Well, Richard did a little bit of digging because I said, we gotta follow the money. It's always, where is the money going? And I mean contributions to candidates. And here we go, to the governors, both parties, to the leaders, both parties, okay? Members on the board, both parties. So you gotta look at this and you gotta say, they're not looking out after our best interests. Evidently, they're there to help themselves and somehow this has gotta change. It's got to change. It isn't, the problem isn't caused by the employees. Contrary, when you look at what they've been doing, the investment practices, the slipshod way they've been handling our monies, our tax dollars, and the employees' contributions, they've been losing us money. You know, and somebody's got to be held accountable. I mean, this nonsense where you're paying five to six hundred million dollars a year in management fees with the school district employees, and they're getting three, four percent or less, and then they contradicted Richard and I in a newspaper article this past summer when we had a reporter in there. We spent a couple of hours with him in my office, and he did a little column like this. I thought, ah, oh, nobody's going to be able to understand this. I mean, you got to be able to explain it like I'm trying to tonight and give the whole story. Well, he didn't. And then what did he do? He called the staffers of both pension funds in Harrisburg, and they said, oh no, they're wrong with what they're saying. They're, they're, they're wrong. Oh, and we made 10% over the last uh, five years, right? And we laughed when we looked at that, and we said, no, wait a minute. If anybody looks at that and says, 10% over five years, that's 2% a year. So who the hell were they kidding? I mean, that's absolute nonsense. I mean, this was just playing a game. But what we want to do is this. We're going to prepare an op-ed piece, and we're going to send it to every newspaper in the state, and I'm going to get a copy of it to every single member of the General Assembly, House, Senate, Democrats, and Republicans, 253. And I'm going to ask my friend Gene De Pasquale, who's Auditor General, to start looking at, he's already picked up on some of this, and he's already said some of the things that I've been talking about and Richard's going to go over with. And I also think the Attorney General needs to take a look at this, because I think there's some fun and games going on here. I don't like what I'm seeing, and it's a lot of money that's changing hands. And uh, if you have any questions, I mean, we just scratched the surface on this, but Richard's the real authority because he's done his homework. Yes, sir. Are you getting any support from the teachers in the You know, it was. No, it, it, it's. 
it's frustrating because it seems like the people that should the president of, he was on last night the president of the state uh, teachers union was on TV last night and he said and, and he's on to it too he's starting to realize they had made it in the year 2000 they were up 123 percent okay way up there and you know almost not quite double but close to double and then of course what was it 2008 when the market really started going downhill but Richard's going to explain some of the information about you know being a prudent investor I mean not risking people's monies willy-nilly uh, you know why would you spend 46 percent of your total assets in risk investments I don't think anybody in their right mind would do that but they did and they continue to do that and then on top of that the enormous fees that they're paying the, the money managers in New York are making more money than we are bottom line yes sir their fees are they fixed fees or are they based on the percentage of return are they based on the size of the asset he's going to he's going to get into a lot of that well that's what richard was saying that you know if you make us money you get a percentage no 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 but no management you're, you're, fees you're wondering why they would put in such risky assets they feel that they don't care because they're going to get their fee no matter what whether okay. whether i make you money or not but you're going to pay my management fee get a percentage of the total they don't do that no well then why should we invest with them why should we let why should we let them handle our money somebody's encouraging them to put it in that mm, I, you know that's where yes sir i agree I would suggest that the reason they took the high risk was because they needed the funds to meet the terrible obligations that were committed. And that lends, tends to make you more risky in order to make more funds. And I would suggest if you chase it, you'll find that's the case. But you got to remember, during, during those years, those eight years, it was going like this. It was only after 2008 when the market went well that's down, that's down. when they started doing some risky things Double down. okay this is kind of a multi question I'm gonna put it into one um, first the, the union members with this issue do you see this as being some sort of um, vehicle catalyst to maybe bring somewhat of a divide between the union leaders and union members you don't see that at all no. okay because what you have you have non-union employees as well as union employees that are in the system you have a lot of the management people that are not union that are in the system everybody got a bloody nose financially with this what i'm asking is when members see the fact that their pensions could have got a better return and they're not and their money's being played with um, we, we've seen for years the stronghold that unions have in our political system with this issue no you're not saying okay no when you look at the makeup of the boards with four members of the house and senate and one union representative on these boards the vast majority of the appointees still emanate with the governors they control because they have to vote on the employees that work for them one and two they pretty well direct where the investments are going to go with the management firms in new york i blame new york managers that were just ripping us off it's ungodly the amount of money yes sir <clears throat> Okay, but the bottom line is, why would they care? Because 
the, the state's asking us to make up the difference, right, as the taxpayers. That, yeah, we should not give them a cent. No, I agree. Right? I, That's they, ridiculous. They, they, see, they, they shouldn't blame the employees. It wasn't the employees. We were all employees. Okay. I know, but why and would they, they care as long as they know that we're going to be able to make up the difference? That's but, the point. But, but the boards, the boards are the ones that are making the decisions, not the employees. Yeah, we're all employees, but here the governor gets to a point, whoever the governor is, I'm not blaming this guy, I'm saying there's sin on all sides. And this has been going on for years. This just didn't pop out of the woodwork overnight. Yes, sir. And I, and I, I can do it out the microphone. Okay. Uh, and, and I think Jess alluded to it, this gentleman in here, is the employees really have no stake in this. Their pensions are fixed. But they're putting money into the pot. They, they've never I missed a, a paycheck. They've continued putting money into the pot. Religiously. All that employee knows is he is getting whatever he has been promised. We changed that in 2010. See, a lot of people don't realize what we did in 2010 with the new legislation. As new employees starting from that year forward, they have to put more money in, they have to work more, a, a fixed number of 10 years before they even vest, okay? And at the end of the time that they retire, they get less money out, about 2%. So all those changes have taken place. And a lot of us are saying, give it a chance to work. You know, everybody's jumping up and down that, the way they calculate these pension funds, if everybody here was ready to retire on tomorrow, you know, it could bankrupt. But how do you figure that that's gonna happen? I mean, that that's just tomfoolery. That's not gonna happen. But that's how they try to classify how much money is available if everybody goes out on pension all at one time. Well, that, you know, that's just playing games with numbers. Yes, sir. What, what is the crisis? Is there a crisis? No. There is no crisis except that they're fooling around with a lot of our money. That's the crisis. And, and, and he's going to point it out. I know he's chomping at the bit. To, to show on on the screen here exactly who created the crisis, what is the crisis, and there is no crisis if we do certain things to correct the way they invest our money now. We need to make sure that these two boards stop the nonsense. Get back to the three or four investors like we used to have that made us a lot of money. Why are we investing in 130 different firms in New York? Well, there's friends, you know. I gotta take care of this one, I gotta take care of that one. Oh, and he's making a couple hundred thousand, and this one's making 1.2 billion, and this one's making maybe 400,000. And when you look at the list, and, and we prepared that list, he did, and, and I was just shaking my head. I thought to myself, they're making all the money. I mean, they're the money makers, not us. They're not making us money. They're not making money, they're stealing money. Amen. No, yes, sir. No. So there is no crisis at the moment, all right? But, but the court has ruled that legislation can't be changed under new contract, right? Not true. We changed it in 2010. For new members. For all new, new members. members. Anybody with school districts or state employees. That was across the board. That was changed. That happened. And not many people remember that. And we keep saying, many of us, just hold the horses. It, it's going to take some time for a lot of this to change. But I, I want to turn it over to this guy here because he's my guru and my financial. One more question. Yes. Okay, right. Okay. My question to uh, Representative Kelly Cruz. Um, Representative Cruz, yes. if these new employees are going to be able to get the money back from the government, who has the right, the governor, to say, you're off the board, you we're got putting it. new people on the board, you got it. And, you, and have you and Rich talked to the governor yet about this to say, hey, this is a problem, these guys aren't doing the job, get them to go out of here. It, it took us how many weeks to go through these reports? He spent, I don't know how many hours, I don't know how many hours he spent going through these reports. The reports are about that thick, and there were three of them for each year. So it was nine 
nine report, uh, no, it was actually 12 reports, including 2013. And then he also looked at the municipal police pension funds, which was kind of interesting. Are they separate? Yes, they're separate, but they're doing extremely well. And I'll turn it over to Rich, he can fill you in now. We're gonna have Tom come up afterwards to answer any questions also. I wanna go back to your question about the crisis. Is there a crisis? For them, no. 